So I got into filmmaking um, actually when I was in high school because I was going to an arts high school and we were learning how to be, I was in the drama program, and so we were learning how to be actors. But I quickly realized that I wasn't really the kind of gregarious person um, that an actor usually tends to be. And what I started to get really involved in was kind of the technical theater aspect. And we actually, in grade 10, fundraised for a linear editing suite. So that was back when we had VHS tapes. We would record onto a VHS tape um, and play from another one, and we would edit kind of one piece at a time. And by some kind of random coincidence, I managed to be one of about four students um, in that year to learn how to use the editing suite. And I loved it because it was so different from theater, because what it really did um, was that it gave me the time that you didn't have in theater. So what's amazing about theater is that there's this live performance aspect and you're really creating the art with the audience. But with film, it's much more controlled. And so you create the film for the audience and you can work on it over and over and over again. And I think what really appealed to me about it was kind of um, how you could really work on making it perfect. And I remember sitting in the editing suite thinking to myself, I can just work on this forever until it's perfect. Um, and now I know that that's not possible with films and there's lots of imperfections and when you're shooting there's a lot that you need to capture in the moment and if you don't get it it's lost forever just like theater. Um, but at the time it really appealed to the sense of uh, being able to control things and so that's, that's why I got into film and that's what I love about it still. Um, so my film Living Downstream uh, is based on a book that was written by a woman who's an ecologist and a cancer survivor and her name is Sandra Steingraber and uh, I read the book when I was just getting out of high school and what I loved about it was that Sandra managed to combine her personal experience of being a cancer survivor um, with her professional experience of, um, uh, she's an ecologist so she was uh, really interested in the links between cancer and the environment and she managed to connect those into a really beautiful and lyrical book and when I was reading it I remember reading some kind of opening passages about uh, the landscape in Illinois which is where Sandra grew up and uh, they were so beautifully written I just remember thinking you know this this book is written like a film. I could see the images of these kind of rolling skies um, over farm fields in Illinois. And I thought, well, for sure someone's going to make a film uh, based on this book one day. Uh, I put it down and I didn't really think about it again once I was done reading the book, but I picked it up a few years later and read it again and I had that same sense like, oh my goodness, someone will definitely be making a film. And at the time I was just uh, studying film at college and I was thinking of getting into documentary, but I was thinking that it would be a, a feature film, that it would be a, a scripted film based on the book with actors. Uh, but I put it down again and didn't think much of it again. And then a couple years later, I was working in a documentary production company here in Toronto. And I picked the book up again and I read it and I had that same feeling like, oh my goodness, where is this film that must be made based on this book? Um, and so I uh, Googled it and I saw that there, as far as I could tell, there was no film that was being made about the book. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I could make the film. Maybe it could be a documentary. So I contacted the author um, because the film is so much about her, because the book is so much about her personal experience, I knew that um, Sandra needed to be in it. And so I contacted her and I asked her if she would be interested in um, being in a film version of her book. And at first she was really reluctant um, because she knew it would take a lot of time, but eventually she agreed. And so that would have been in 2004. Um, I spent the next couple years researching and fundraising and we started filming um, a little bit in 2006, uh, but we really kind of got underway when we got um, a nice grant from the Series Trust, um, which is a foundation that supports uh, sustainable agriculture initiatives. And so once I had that grant, um, I knew that I could finish the film. And so we started it um, in um, 2008, and then it was released in 2010. And um, it's been, it's won some awards and it's screened about 200 times publicly. Um, and it's being used uh, a lot in universities and um, by nonprofits and activist groups. And I'm really excited about um, the length of time that it's been used for. So it's still screening quite regularly. Um, and I'm still getting comments from audience members about it and fielding questions, which is great and lots of fun. 
So I was really motivated to start working in the documentary industry when I was studying film at Sheridan College. And so when I got into film initially, I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll be a director, maybe I'll be a cinematographer. And I imagine that, I think everyone, almost everyone imagines that they'll be making kind of big feature films like Martin Scorsese or, or something like that, scripted projects. Um, but I had always kind of had these two parts of my personality. So I had one part um, that was very interested in being creative and you know I felt like I had something to say and I felt like I had a creative take on life and I really wanted to pursue that. But the other part of me really wanted to do something um, constructive and helpful. You know, I, it sounds cheesy, but I always wanted to um, help the world, change the world in some way. Uh, and so, you know, I would kind of um, oscillate between wanting to do something creative, wanting to be a writer or an actor or a filmmaker, or wanting to do something, um, you know, kind of more for the good of society, like I thought of nurse or doctor or teacher, those were all kind of careers that I considered too. Uh, and so I decided, okay, well, I'll study film, try to kind of feed that creative aspect of myself, uh, and then I'll see where it takes me. So in first year at Sheridan, uh, I was watch I was in a course um, that was basically a survey course of Canadian film, and most of it really did focus on the National Film Board of Canada and all the documentaries um, that they had made over the long course of their history. And I remember sitting in the darkened lecture hall watching one of these films and seeing how beautifully and creatively it was put together, but also uh, that it had had a very tangible social. So it had a very tangible social message to share. And so I realized in that moment that I could actually try to do something that was helpful to the world and also try to do something that kind of fed my creative self uh, in making documentaries. And so that's uh, what drew me to this career and that's kind of what drives me every day. So the intersection of art and politics is something that I haven't done a lot of thinking about because to me uh, everything that we do is political and art is part of what I do so naturally I kind of see those two things as being intertwined. Um, I Because I want to affect change in the world and because I want to teach people, show them different points of view, different perspectives, um, you know naturally I think that that's a political act but I don't necessarily have a political agenda when I create my films. Um, you know, I'm interested in kind of opening up a world and helping people to see things uh, in a way that they may not have before. Um, and Living Downstream, I would say, is, is a bit of an advocacy film. So it presents um, the science and then presents some political analysis uh, by Sandra on the science. Um, but all my films don't necessarily do that. Some of them are kind of more um, uh, windows into people's worlds and people are people that I follow are usually driven by something themselves so maybe by a political agenda or a social agenda or um, even kind of a faith agenda. I did a, a documentary about Quakers uh, that really focused on what drove them in their faith, you know, what kind of motivated them to take action in the world, and it was their faith. Uh, so I'm really interested in what drives people, and um, you know, I guess that's part of the thing about me being driven to do documentaries because I want to affect change in the world. Well, I'm interested in finding out what drives other people too. For the past two years, I've been working on an observational documentary um, that actually follows Sandra, who's the main character in Living Downstream. So this film is, it's not really a sequel, it's very different stylistically and thematically, um, but it does kind of follow some portions of Sandra's life again. So it's, um, Living Downstream is kind of the jumping off point for this new film. Uh, the new film doesn't have a title, but it's about uh, the fight against fracking in New York State. And um, in December, New York actually banned fracking. Uh, and this film kind of tells the story of the lead up to that ban. So it follows a host of different characters, including Sandra, um, who's been very active in the anti-fracking movement for the past few years. It also follows a couple of her colleagues um, on the activist side of things. And it follows uh, some industry representatives as well. So people who were um, really working hard to try to make sure that New York would allow fracking to happen. And um, this film really kind of tells 
again, the story of what's driving these people. So, um, you know, why, why is this such a big issue for them? You know, people really did put their lives on hold on both sides of the issue. So industry people, activists, everyone really threw themselves into the fight uh, and they were all very determined to win. And I'm interested in um, exploring why they did it, how they did it, and what the cost um, to the rest of their lives really was. So alternative financing and alternative distribution for documentaries in Canada is something that I'm actually quite interested in. Uh, so when I first started working in, in the industry, um, there was a lot more support, uh, funding support for documentaries. And um, that's because there were more television um, broadcasters that were programming documentaries. There was more diversity in the kinds of documentaries that they were programming. Uh, and uh, this, the Canadian Television Fund was really um, active in, in supporting these projects. Now since that time there's been kind of a contraction of uh, the broadcasters that are looking for documentaries. They're all looking for uh, similar types of documentaries now than maybe they were before. There's definitely been kind of a move into more reality programming as opposed to documentary programming. Um, and so that's shifted the landscape. And what that means is that there are less kind of traditional ways to fund your film. And so when I was first working on Living Downstream, I was really hoping that I would get a broadcaster on board. But because uh, Sandra was my main character and she was American, and because I was a fairly unknown filmmaker at the time, um, I really wasn't able to um, find a broadcaster who was interested in the project. Now, what happens when you don't have a broadcaster to trigger your funding uh, is that you also don't have a guaranteed audience. And so if you're funding your film, um, outside of the traditional broadcast model, then you also need to think about how you're going to get an audience. And so those things, alternative distribution and alternative financing kind of go hand in hand. And so I was really lucky to fund my film um, with uh, foundation money, with arts council money, um, with um, even some kind of early crowdfunding stuff that wasn't on a crowdfunding platform, but um, you know, people did like, um, fundraising for cancer prevention initiatives and gave money to my project. Uh, so I did all that and I realized that because I didn't have a broadcaster who had commissioned the project, I needed to make sure that the film um, would be seen. And so I created um, kind of a very detailed uh, outreach and audience engagement campaign. Uh, so it's a really great idea to think about alternative financing and think about alternative distribution if you don't have a way into kind of the more traditional means. Um, it, it allows you to engage with your audience in a deeper way. It allows you to direct where your film is going to go and measure the impact that it might have. Uh, the problem is that it's a lot more time consuming than the original model. So I spent four years making the film and then three more years um, engaging in outreach and distribution of the film. Uh, but it was fun and I loved it and I think that there are certain films that you really want to push the extra mile, um, especially social issues films where you really want um, to try to affect some change, to try to teach um, some information to people. Um, if you control the distribution yourself, uh, that all becomes easier and it becomes um, a real learning experience. So I learned a lot from that uh, that I hope to apply to my next film. I think Cinema Politica is doing great work. I was so thrilled when they said that they wanted to have Living Downstream as one of their films. Um, and I know that it's been screened all over Canada at universities because of it. Uh, I looked at uh, the website not long ago and I was just impressed by the range and the diversity of the films um, that are screened under the Cinem Cinema Politica umbrella. And, um, you know, I'm excited. I think that documentaries are entertainment, they're engaging, but they're really useful in an educational setting. When you have um, a group of people who come together who are there in a space to learn and then they're watching a film and then they discuss the film afterwards, it's um, it can be really impactful. I mean some of the deepest learning that I've gotten has come from watching films and watching documentaries. 
um, and analyzing them and, and thinking about them in kind of an educational context. And so I'm so thrilled um, to be part of um, the Cinema Politica filmmakers. And uh, I, I've actually never been to a screening of my film with Cinema Politica, but I'd love to do that one day. I, I, um, I love talking about the film and I love engaging with audiences about the film. And I think it's a great forum to do that.